hey, we need to go, and got the weight again. And I got in the car, I told T.L., get in the back seat, and uh, looked at Ron, and it was beautiful, beautiful. Looking at Ron, he looked at me, he gave me a thumbs up, I gave him a thumbs up, and we left. And you guys did that pretty much on your own. Yes, we, we did. We were never given the okay to go. We got fi the final straw for us to go, at least that's my opinion, and how I felt was where one of the DS agents said, hey, they're starting to light the buildings on fire. You guys need to get here. The men on the ground in Benghazi, Libya, admitting they ignored orders to stand down while the U.S. consulate was under attack on September 11, 2012. Now Governor Mitt Romney weighing in from Fox News Sunday. Who was it that told these guys to stand down? Were they in contact with people higher up, particularly from the United States? What was the reason they were told to stand down? And again, he was on Fox News Sunday. We've talked about him a little bit with the Fox News political insiders, mm -hmm. Pat, John, and Doug via satellite yep. tonight. Uh, your thoughts, Doug? Well, this is a huge, huge question. We have a documentary. I think it's following us immediately tonight on the Fox News channel that explores not the politics of Benghazi, but what happened and why. And this question of why people who were prepared to save the ambassador and save American lives were not given an order to proceed and why they were given an order to stand down is a huge question that requires answering. And I urge everybody to watch the documentary. Doug? All right, excuse me, John. Yeah, and, yeah, and Harris, it doesn't really get in the show to Hillary and all the what differences it make and, and Obama's role, which is all going to come this fall as the House Special Committee finally begins having public hearings to get to the bottom of this thing. You know? But it and, is important that people get the facts, which is what this documentary does. Oh, it's great. Pat? Great. Yeah, I was stunned. You know, uh, the, I think it's an amazing documentary. And I want to say this. You know, I've called this. It is the greatest cover-up in American history. What's going on with Benghazi and the shame of my party and people of my uh, intellect persuasion, liberals and others, who have, who have refused to deal with this, the press. But I want to tell you something. I always assume the cover-up was coming in the White House when Mr. Obama and, Mr. and President Obama were not doing. I did not ever give credence to the fact that they did make an effort that they would stop an effort to save these people. This is stunning information. These men have been kept secret. The white, the CIA has held people down and kept the news media from getting to these people. This is unreal. The notion that somebody was gathering insurgent, uh, mili uh, excuse me, local militias, when across the way people are dying and won't let them go is without a doubt. These are heroes and this is all going to come out. They are never going to get away with what they have done in this administration. And by the way, Obama and Clinton are not in the, in the, in, 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 in mentioned all of this documentary, but they hang over it like the ghost in Macbeth. Doug, there will be critics. Yes. And the critics are going to say, this is old news. There is no news. We know everything there is to know about Benghazi. But I think Harris, a fair minded person, will A, watch the documentary hear what men on the ground say in a non-political way, and add it into the hearings that are going to be held this fall and yeah. form their own opinions. Uh, well, think, hearings next week right. again. I think this story, though, has, has really moved from Fox, which has never given up on it, right? It has now made its way into the so-called mainstream media. This is on the news at night. It is on. I heard it on CBS Network Radio the other day. They were talking about Front page 13 of the New York hours, Times. New York Times. Mm -hmm. the, the truth can't be held down forever in this country, and it is going to come out. And we'll see. Pat keeps raising a great point. Are there courageous Democrats, Harris, who will go for the truth over spin. Doug, are there? Oh, I count myself as one of them. I mean, Harrison, in Congress. And, and I, I mean. think what's going to happen is the hearings will bring out facts that I think are going to be difficult for the administration and the American people to ignore. And I think some Democrats, like Dianne Feinstein, yeah. who on ISIS has expressed concern about the president's mm -hmm. approach, I think we'll see more of it. Uh, all right. I, I want to pop up that Gallup poll mm. and round out our time tonight uh, looking at where we are politically inside Washington sure. and this president, because this was ground shaking for some inside the Beltway last week, uh, no doubt inside the White House if they saw a presidential uh, job approval. 38 percent. Now, 
you know, this isn't a pointed question where surveyors were asked exactly why do you feel that way? So mm. we, we don't know all exactly of what went in here, but your quick thoughts tonight. Quick thoughts are well, when a president is below 40 percent, Harris, as this president is, that spells huge, huge problems for the administration and particularly for the Democrats in a midterm election. This is a real warning sign. John. Yeah, we haven't gotten into the Senate races this year on this show tonight, but all of the stuff we're talking about has mm -hmm. to be favoring the Republicans. That as the leading of the Democrats with 38 percent. The immigration thing we talked about a minute ago, the, the Republicans are going to be running around for the next eight weeks saying, you've got to vote for me because I will stop uh, the president from doing amnesty after the election. If you elect a Republican Senate, oh, that's we'll stop it. So right. did he set up the conversation yeah, then for the GOP? By doing the flip-flop, he that's, screwed the thing up. So, Pat, do they practice but, these things in the White House? Do they, like, role-play, or how does that happen? Well, well uh, they're supposed to. I, you know, I, I, I can't believe about how awful they've been in this, and I think it comes from the president's attitude and indifference. But I want to say, Doug is right, he's under 40, and John's making an important point. It's going to change the political dynamic. That's what I was arguing today. problem for the Republicans is nobody likes them. And the fact is, is that the country would turn against them, too. They may not have a choice. They, this, but, but they have not put out a positive message. That's what the Wall Street Journal said. But mm -hmm. in Senate races like Kansas, where we have an independent, a real Mr. Smith coming, you see it in New York in the fight in the primaries against corruption by right, Teach Out and the governor. Those are coming now in politics. All right. And from Twitter, Kim Guy writes, if voices are silent on Benghazi, then blood will finally scream out the truth. Hashtag FRW. Up next. We'll be back here tomorrow, noon Eastern, outnumbered. 13 hours at Benghazi now.